So one of the spirit of mystery concepts, right? Like when we talk about the microcosm and macrocosm as within, so without concepts, most of us barely even step into the Gospel of John. and That kind of shocks me. So if you want to know what I mean, the rock with me is we enter into the Gnostic mysteries within. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, I know that you are a teacher from God, but no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Yeshua answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, Truly, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who was born of the Spirit. What's up with it? It's your boy Justin and welcome back to the Mystical Mind State. To be born again is one of the core tenets of Christian theology. Everyone knows that, but how does rebirth give us the ability to see the kingdom of God. I mean, it's Nicodemus' reaction for me, though. Like, bruh, how am I going to climb back inside the womb? That doesn't even make any sense, Yeshua. Except Nicodemus wasn't cracking jokes. He was actually asking for clarification. The phrase we tend to translate as born again carries several different meanings depending on the context. Whatever Essene wrote the Gospel of John does this a lot. Almost always with concepts that have strong parallels between the Greek and Hebrew languages, right? Now, the Greek word for again is anothen, and it can also apply from above and can denote things that came from God. Newer translations actually read, unless a person is born from above, but even that doesn't really clarify what's being said here. Anothen also means coming from the first or born from the beginning, right? Students of the Gospel of Thomas may recall Loki at 19, where it says, Blessed is the one who existed before coming into being. Because the seed of awareness is the same in every human being, right? We all have the, the eye sense within us. So Yeshua clarifies from Nicodemus and tells him, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot see the kingdom. Our perception of our experience ties into Yeshua's doctrine of the kingdom here. I'll leave a link in the description for those of you that missed some of the other videos I've done on that subject. But essentially, our personalities distract us and clutter our minds with thoughts and impressions that keep the lamp of the body, our eye sense, from observing things in union. Nicodemus is like an archetype. The name is actually derived from a title, uh, Naktimon, which means breakthrough, right? Like the sun broke through. Consciousness is the light of the human race throughout the book of John. It's raw mysticism being discussed. Evangelicals can't make sense of it, so they come up with all sorts of doctrines that confuse seekers, but what's true today was equally as true back then. Remember, Nicodemus came to Yeshua by night because the search beyond religious darkness is universal. We have a figure who recognized no one could do semaino or signs, all of these great works of God that point to spiritual truth unless, as he says, God is with him. Even now, Many of us remain in the dark and insist on seeing this as a sign that baptism is necessary for salvation. Someday we'll get into a series on Kemet because A, I love Egyptian mysteries, and B, it's one of the few things that the Masonic types actually have right, but baptism goes back to Kemet. So Yeshua wasn't speaking to future Christians. He was talking to a Pharisee who observed the letter of the law. Purity is a huge part of Judaism, and he would have been aware of ritual cleansing, right? Ablution and immersion is a ceremonial washing performed to correct ritual impurity and restore one to a state of cleanliness. Physical cleansing followed by withdrawal, hit bananuk, where meditations take place until one is cleansed inside and outside. 
just like the kingdom of God is inside and outside of us, right? These ritual immersions into Mayim Hayim, a living water, were written into the law of Moses and go way, way back to the blessed rabbis of old. We are born of living water, and we are children of the living father, husband and wife, right? Special shout out to the Vernix Cassiosa. It's a whole watery bile film that covers our skin in the final trimester, but that which is flesh is flesh, right? The Ruach of God fills the nostrils when we come in, kicking and screaming and draw that first breath, and divinity rests within us, Neshama. Nefesh being the lowest level of being, also called the carnal mind by Paul or animal nature in the later occult schools. It's a sort of self-focused and self-seeking that runs on self-will, right? Filling its own desires and its own needs, refusing to surrender even an inch. Uh, this is prevalent in people who refuse to observe the Ruach Elohim or breath of God that rests in all of us, right? They only see it as relevant in themselves. But that's what makes us Ruach uh, Memalela, right? Or like speaking beings. And it's, it's not just mine. It's yours and hers and his and theirs and theirs. Of course, all of this would have carried deep meaning with Nicodemus, and he would have understood exactly what Yeshua meant. So I want you to consider your own breathing for a second. I bet it continues whether you pay attention to it or not. All of these unconscious actions will just keep happening, whether they have our attention or not. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So is everyone who has been born of the Spirit. Aha! Remember those parallels the author of John likes? Well, Ruach and Numa each carry a double meaning. Numa has a basic meaning of air and motion, like wind, or breath, as in something necessary to life. Digest that last part a second. Something necessary to life. Now, think about our concept of consciousness. The Oxford definition of consciousness is the fact of awareness by the mind of itself and the world. Kingdom of God within and all around you, right? Ironically, the Cone Greek, the specific dialect used in the New Testament definition of pneuma is the rational spirit, the power by which the human being feels, thinks, and decides. Follow me now? The Ruach Memalela, speaking being of the prophets, hits us again. Now let's wrap it up with a pretty little bow and put this phrase into modern terms. Unless one is regenerated with the understanding that we are begotten from the beginning, we cannot and absolutely will not perceive through the spiritual sight of the great I am within and see this is the kingdom of God. Welcome to the Gnosis of Malkut, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how do we make this heaven on earth? <laughs>